the best in the world podcast with Richard Parr. We'll start this week's best in the world with Richard Parr with a question. What does sailing and CrossFit have in common? That's right. This week's guest, Anna Tunnicliffe, the 2008 laser radial sailing Olympic champion and now four-time CrossFit Games competitor. It's an amazing story how she was born in England, raised in the States, became an Olympic champion and now getting close to the pinnacle in CrossFit. We have a great chat on today's Best in the World with Richard Barr. She talks about the transferable skills between the two different disciplines. She talks about her diet, which includes paleo and the zone. We learn more about that on this week's show. She talks about her puke workout on a puke day, what that involves, and much, much more on this week's Best in the World with Richard Barr. It's a don't miss episode, like they are every single Wednesday on iTunes and on Stitcher. If you enjoy this show or have enjoyed previous episodes of The Best in the World with Richard Parr, do me a quick favour, go to iTunes and give us a quick rating and review. It would really help our show. I would really appreciate it. All right, just before we get to the interview with Anna, I want to tell you that today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is one of the leading suppliers of audiobooks in the world. They've got 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player, you can check out their service with a free 30-day download, a free 30-day service of their product. Check them out. All you've got to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash best. That's audibletrial.com forward slash best. Check them out because, of course, as they're the sponsor, you will also be helping me out. I would really appreciate it. All right, it's time to learn from the very best. It's time to learn from the 2008 Olympic sailing champion, Anna Tunnicliffe. The Best in the World podcast with Richard Parr. Anna Tunnicliffe, Olympic sailing champion and CrossFit competitor, welcome to the best in the world. Now, as I was doing my research about your appearance, I saw one interview and it said that you set challenges for yourself every single day. So what has been your challenge today, Anna? Uh, my challenge today actually is uh, it's coming up. It's in the workout. Uh, and uh, my goal is to do, uh, to do the movements unbroken in every round. And... Uh, to push myself to new limits oh wow i saw also a video of you doing your puke day i was exhausted just watching that for those who, who don't know about it could you tell us what that involves please my puke day i don't know which one is that <laughs> um i feel like i puke almost every day um yeah i mean the workouts that we do they're just uh you drive your heart rate up so much that um you're just pushing your body to its absolute extreme limits and that you know sometimes it just pushes it to the absolute edge and you just just gonna lose everything at the end of it mm. so let, let's talk about how you first got interested in crossfit obviously you had amazing success as a sailor you became an olympic champion we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on but how did you make that transition from sailing to crossfit because to a lot of people they wouldn't necessarily see the connection no so when we were training for the olympics um we were training with some buddies up uh, we were training in Chicago and staying with some buddies up there and was like, hey, we just need a gym to go to. We were on a, you know, a standard gym program and they're like, well, we just started going to this new gym, like come check it out. And we're like, all right, well, we'll see. So we went in um, and it was a CrossFit gym and absolutely fell in love with the idea of what it was, how like how sore you could get so quickly. Um, the workout was, I think the first workout we did was um, I don't know, like 12 minutes long and we were all so sore the next day and I was like, oh my God, this is brilliant. I love it. And uh, so from there, we uh, we did some training there and then we moved to Miami to finish up our winter season training and found a gym there and happened to, uh, it just happened to be this, the same gym that my uh, coach and now husband works at 
And uh, he was my coach, and we sat down, and we're like, okay, well, you know, I, I know you can compete in CrossFit. That's kind of cool. Um, what would it take? And he's like, well, first off, let's focus on getting you through the Olympics um, safely. So we trained for a year just getting fitter but not really focusing too much on CrossFit specific, just doing the workouts, getting better and better shape. And then after the 2012 Olympics, we kind of set out a program and just started training hard um, regularly and, tr- and made the goal of trying to make the CrossFit Games. And the original goal was to make the 2014 Games, but ended up qualifying in 2013 as well. So we got there a year earlier. And um, I just love the, like, the competitive aspect of it. Uh, but at the same time, the community that goes along with it, it's such a supportive community and everybody's so fantastic and cheers for you no matter what level of fitness you're at you know everybody's suffering the same um and and just there for each other it's really great Mm, i've seen that with quite a few people the the way it's just kind of grown and there's quite an addiction to it isn't it once you start you just don't want to stop right exactly yeah so between 2012 and 2014 you were still competing as a sailor as well is that right Yep. So how difficult was it to start juggling the both when you're really concentrating on CrossFit and obviously you've had great success in sailing or or was it really you were just kind of losing the focus of sailing? How, how did all of that work? No, it was a little, um, in a way I say it was a good distraction, um, you know, because I'd been doing Olympic sailing for probably 10 years at that point and, um, and I loved it, don't get me wrong, um, but it was the same, um, kind of the same circuit year after year. And I'd been living out of my suitcase for, you know, almost 10 years. And I was like, okay, I need to kind of just take a little bit of break, which is why I ended up doing stopping the Olympic sailing um, at that point. It was uh, it was a, hard to balance sometimes, particularly when we were traveling so much, mm. um, trying to find the, the, the right gyms to go to overseas. Because at the time, CrossFit wasn't as big. Um, in Europe so finding a CrossFit gym over in Europe was particularly hard to do Um, so it's just a bit of time management and uh, figuring out the best way to make the program work when I was away Um, but at the same time like I said I just kind of needed to not live out of my suitcase for a couple years as well so if CrossFit had say been I don't want to say invented but was more popular say 10 years before when you were sailing could you have seen yourself taking a, a different route or do you not think about those what ifs? Um, I don't really think about it. You know, um, CrossFit, you know, started the first CrossFit Games was in uh, what two thousand and seven. Um, you know, and CrossFit itself started before that, so it's been around for a long, long time. Do I wish I'd gotten into it at an earlier age? Absolutely, I'd be in amazing shape. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, like. I I found it when I needed to find it and um you know I had my Olympic experiences which were you know I, I wouldn't trade for the world. I absolutely love um everything that happened in the sailing. Um and, and I missed the sport of sailing absolutely. Um, you know, and but just right now like it's it was a little bit of time for CrossFit. Do you do much sailing at all now? I don't do so much of the sailing itself. I do um I do some coaching. I coach um, some of the, the youth sailors in the country, um, help them try and help them like step closer towards accomplishing their dreams. Um, I'd like to get back into sailing. Um, we've got some possibilities out there, um, some ideas. So we'll see where that takes us. Mm, we look forward to seeing what that might be. So how did you first get into sailing? What, what type of age? And when did you realize you were really good at it? Um, I have been sailing my whole life. My parents... Um, my parents come from sailing backgrounds, so it was what we did. Uh, my parents owned a 40 foot boat. They, they gutted it and rebuilt it when I was growing up from like age one and a half to, I don't even know. They sold it, I think when we were like 10, 11. Um, so we spent our summers on that cruising up and down the, the English coast. Um, and then, uh, you know, started learning how to sail by myself around age six, maybe, but to be honest, I absolutely hated it. I hated sailing. Didn't like the cold weather. Didn't like the cold water. <laughs> um, just had to do it because um, that was what my parents did. And, you know, they never forced me into the competition. They just said, you need to learn how to sail because we're going sailing. And then, fair enough. Um, 
And then when we moved to America, I started competing a little bit more and started winning. And I think being a competitive person, I was like, ooh, this is fun. Now I'm winning. And uh, was winning locally and, and, and enjoyed the sport a lot then, started to fall in love with it, watched the, 20, uh, sorry, the 1996 Olympics and was like, ah, I want to go to the Olympics. I want to win a gold medal. This would be really cool. Mm. And kind of kept that thought in the back of my mind for a while. Did more running and cross, like track and cross country in high school and had to decide if I was going to go to college for sailing or for running. And I uh, kept remembering that like I wanted to go to the Olympics and like sailing really was my sport. And <clears throat> growing up, uh, like as a youth sailor, I wasn't, wasn't fantastic. I wasn't anybody that people were like, oh, this girl's going to be great. Let's pick her and, you know, focus in on her. It wasn't really until halfway through university that um, I, I managed to get a lot of time on the water. I had fantastic coaches, fantastic teammates and started to learn how to train what it meant to win, how to work as a team, and how to practice properly so that you can accomplish your goals. And so halfway through college, I was like, all right, this is what I need to do. This is the time and dedication it takes. And then was able to, you know, put it in, put the time in in college to get, I'd say, good enough to be able to hop into the international scene and do okay. Um, and then from there, it was just heads down, grinding and climbing up the world rankings the best you could. And I bet all of those things you learned when changing to the international scene were a lot of the things you also applied when you moved to CrossFit as well. Was there anything in particular that you were able to transfer to CrossFit? Um, I think, you know, I think what's probably like the competition level. Um, you know, it's as you, you do a local competition, the competition's hard and then you go to the next level level and it's even harder and and the good thing about I think the two similarities is consistency um so at sailing events were a week long you know you have 10 12 races you got to perform consistently across the board same with CrossFit you can't just be really good at one thing you've got to be consistently good and so you know understanding that okay you don't have to win every event you just need to be good at every event um having that understanding I think was easier coming in being like, okay, well, I got a fifth here. That's okay. That's not a bad thing. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. Are there any kind of particular superstitions or routines that you would go through in either sailing or in CrossFit before you'd uh, start an event? I used to be superstitious in, uh, sailing. Um, I used to not allow green on the boat. Oh, um, so, like any item of clothing that had green on it, I wouldn't wear. <laughs> why, why green? I don't know. I, I heard it once that um, if you have green on a boat, it's bad luck. And I actually had a green line on my boat for one event and I did terrible. And so from that point on, I was like, unless it's a provided boat and it comes with green on it, like I will not bring green on the boat. <laughs> um, and I don't know. It's one of those silly things. So I just never wore green. Um, and then uh, in CrossFit, I don't really have too many superstitions um i like to put seven tomatoes in my breakfast in the morning wow i, I don't know why seven not big ones like the little, little cherry tomatoes okay yeah um and, and i don't know why it's seven it just <laughs> it's seven and so it's it's been seven so i just do it every morning <laughs> what what else is in your nutrition what what do you have in most mornings for breakfast what what type of food are you having uh, throughout the day and how many times are you eating a day um, I eat a fair amount of times a day. Um, I eat uh, paleo and uh, I follow the zone diet um, as close as I can. Um, what, what is that for those who don't know, Anna? What is the zone? The zone is basically portion control. Um, it doesn't limit what you can eat. It just limits um, how much you can eat. So you basically you figure out how much, body, uh, how much fuel your body needs and uh, – and you balance it out so that uh, you're intaking really only what your body needs um, and you're not having to waste extra energy breaking down the excess. But it also does a really good job of balancing out um, your blood sugar and your hormones throughout your body. Um, and so it keeps basically your carbohydrates and your proteins in balance. And um, instead of having like, you know, too many carbs and spiking your blood sugar and then an hour later feeling really crappy because 
you know, you, you've spiked it and now there's nothing left. It, it keeps everything in super balance so you sustain your energy throughout the day. Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, j- just going back to what, so what would be a typical breakfast for you, Anna? Uh, so I'll have three eggs, um, a couple pieces of turkey bacon. Um, I'll put some onions in my little seven cherry tomatoes in there. Um, sometimes if it's going to be a hard day of working out, I'll put in some sweet potato just a little bit. If not, I'll just leave it at the onions and tomato. And then um, I'll have some fruit, so like oranges or berries. And that's the same as what you have now as when you were in sailing? Has it changed much? Um, yeah, I didn't eat zone so much when I sailed. Um, I ate paleo towards the end of my sailing career for the most part. Uh, but I wasn't nearly as as strict with it as I am now. And then um, and in my early sailing, I just I ate what I wanted to eat. The Best in the World podcast with Richard Parr. More great knowledge to come from Anna Tunnicliffe on The Best in the World with Richard Barr. I just want to remind you to check out my brand new show. It's called Sportachino. We are live every single weekday morning in the UK at 8 GMT, but we're live throughout the world on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Sportachino. We're also on YouTube and we're also on iTunes as an audio podcast so if you like this show also go and listen to it on itunes go and listen to sportachino i really appreciate your support please like our page on facebook that would be wonderful one more reminder that today's show is brought to you by audible to check out their service they are offering you a free download and a 30 day trial just go to audibletrial.com forward slash best audibletrial.com forward slash best 180,000 titles to choose from. All right, let's get back to learning from the very best. This week, it's Anna Tunnicliffe. The Best in the World podcast with Richard Parr. So let's talk about 2008 when you became an Olympic champion. How was that experience and could you quite believe it when you'd achieved that feat? It was was surreal. Um, It took a long time to settle in to realize that it actually happened. It was such an odd event. Like I I just sailed really consistently and uh, I never won a race at the Olympics that year. Oh. I just had a a nice consistent scoreline. So most of my results were somewhere between second and sixth place. And I had one or two that were outside of 10th, I think, like a, a 12th and a 14th or something like that. Um, and so I had just a really good scoreline, which was able to keep me up there. And right from the beginning, I had um, like a dot on my sail, which basically says you're in metal contention. And so I just kind of I was like, all right, well, let's just keep sailing and see what happens. It's a long event. Um, I felt really comfortable with the conditions. And really comfortable with the venue and what what was going on and where the wind was and everything like that. So I think that just kept me really calm. And then um, the medal race was a bit of a the medal race is like the final race of the event was just the top ten sailors and uh, it it kind of didn't start very well for me. And for most of the race, I was ended up dropping down into the bronze medal position. But right at the end, um, on the third leg of four, I caught a big wind shift and moved up to um third place or something like that and it moved me back up into the gold medal position so you know the regatta was never really over until we crossed the finish line um but crossing that finish line and knowing we'd won the gold medal is um it was amazing it's you know four years four or five years of your life just dedicated every day um to that one moment is you know you're like okay all those sacrifices were worth it all that time all those tears the sweat and blood well Mm worth it and um you know it wasn't until after the medal ceremony after the uh press conference and I got back to my room and I was by myself just alone in my room quietly I like broke down and I was like oh my god (laughs) we really did this Mm. 
Amazing. Is it then hard to motivate yourself again? Because obviously you did another four-year cycle for the 2012 games. And is it hard to kind of G yourself up again when you've done that, when you've reached the pinnacle of your of your sport? I don't think so. I mean, I think I think it's very personal dependent uh, and probably sport dependent. You know, and the great thing with sailing is that and I guess with most sports, everyone's always getting better. Um, it's with sailing, the conditions are never the same, you know, so you never sail the perfect race. You can sail close to a perfect race, but you never sail a perfect race. And, you know, athletes at, at that level want perfection. So you're always striving to be better and better. And, uh, so I think you're always chasing that going back in it, um, for another four years was absolutely what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I had, I had and still have other dreams in sailing. Um, and that's why I changed disciplines so I could, you know, broaden my sailing experience and learn new boats, new skills, um, a different, different game basically. And so that I could become an even better sailor to help me with other goals in sailing as well. What are your dreams for sailing right now then, Anna? <laughs> right now to get back on the boat and race. Um, <laughs> that would be a good place to start. You know, I've always wanted to be involved in the America's Cup. Um, oh, yeah. But, that, I mean, that would be that would be an amazing experience. Um, it, it's obviously every a lot of people dream for that, and it's extremely hard. Um, but just getting back into, like, High performance sailing and showing that women can, you know, compete equally alongside the men and, you know, show that women can be strong physically um, and, and do the same jobs and, and, you know, earn that earn their spots um, on a on a co-ed team and not just have to sail all women's teams or, and in positions like that. So. With this in mind and the way we started the interview talking about your challenges every day, are you someone who always kind of looks for that next goal? Are you always goal setting? And, and when you do that, or if you do that, are you someone who writes them down or you just kind of know? Um, I, I write my big goals down, um, my daily goals I don't necessarily write down. Um, but if I don't have something to work towards, I feel lost. Um, you know, and even if it's something like something as simple as I want to be able to, you know, back squat X amount of pounds, you know, if I'm on a, a cycle in my strength program that's working on back squats, that's what keeps me going on days where I'm tired or days where I feel like, ugh, this weight is really heavy. Well, yeah, it's heavy, but remember your goal. You want to get even heavier, so you need to push through this so you can get to the heavier weight. So it just kind of keeps me going because I feel lost if I don't have something to work towards mm, and i read that the crossfit um enjoyment goes beyond just you and your partner your, your parents do it as well is that right yep my parents do it so i own a gym my husband and i um own a gym with my parents um t2 crossfit or t squared crossfit in uh, in pittsburgh um and uh yeah we love it it's you know it's a family affair and my parents do it and even like all our members are kind of like our extended family, like all good friends um, and, you know, just so welcoming. Everyone's so nice, always encouraging, willing to help out in any way possible. It's just such a, a great community. Oh, that's fantastic. So when you're not doing CrossFit, when you're not sailing, how do you relax? How do you unwind? Um, so I have two dogs at home. So we, uh, we spend time with our dogs. We we read. We watch TV. Watch movies. Um, sometimes we just like to put the TV on and let our minds not have to work. <laughs> it's a really nice way to do it. Is there any book you'd recommend? Uh, I don't know about books I recommend. I just like to. I, my mom basically gives me books. Like she'll read a book and she's like, "Yeah, this is good. Read it." And so. Just when I, I I read a lot when I travel, so yeah. when I'm on the road, I'll, I'll just be reading whatever book she's given me lately. 
Oh, great. Well, I like listening to audiobooks as well. They're, they're really good. It's always good just to kind of unwind and, and get a bit smarter. And I think we've definitely done that by listening about your journey today. And I thank you so much for being on The Best in the World with Rich Bar. Just before we go, you mentioned about your CrossFit gym. Maybe just tell our listeners how they can continue to learn about you on social media, on via websites and anything else you'd like to promote, please. Yeah, so our gym website is chichucrossfit.com. Um, we're also on Facebook. And then my personal Instagram is a ton of cliff, and my athlete page is Anna ton of cliff, and Twitter is a ton of cliff, and you can follow everything that we're doing on there. I'm about to do that. In fact, I'm already following you on Twitter. I'm about to do that on Instagram and everything else as well. Anna ton of cliff, thank you so much for being on the podcast, and thank you for being the best in the world. Thank you very much. The Best in the World Podcast with Richard Parr. Thanks again to Anna Tunnicliffe for being this week's Best in the World guest. We really enjoyed the chat with her this week. If you enjoy sailing, then... And as not the first sailor we've had on the show, go back and listen to my interview with Ian Williams, the World Match Racing Tour World Champion. It's a good chat with him. One of the earlier episodes in The Best in the World. And there's plenty more for you to go back and listen to. Perhaps you like rowing. Perhaps you want to listen to Heather Stanning or Mahe Drysdale. Perhaps you like football. We've got Bodo Ilgner. We've got rugby stars. We've got athletes. We've got so much more for you to go back and listen to and learn from. You can do that on iTunes, on Stitcher, and of course, Richard Parr. Net. I would love for you to do all of that. Coming up soon on The Best in the World, we'll be hearing from the Olympic volleyball champion, Phil Dalhauser. We've also got another water polo champion in KK Clark. They're all to come on The Best in the World, plus many other great stars lined up. We're so excited to bring them to you every single Wednesday. If you've got any thoughts about the show or any questions you'd like to ask, any of these great superstars, just send me a tweet at Richard underscore pa. All right, I'll let you enjoy the rest of your week and I'll speak to you again next Wednesday. Goodbye. The Best in the World podcast with Richard Parr.